love podcast, hate nonsense. It's the Paul Show podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Dudes rock. And I have great news for the audience. Go ahead. There's some banging above us. Oh, yeah. yeah. So not at the moment. Listen out for that. If uh-huh. You will not believe... Even we're like, this is a bit much <laughs> in terms of audio <laughs> interference. Even Sean's like that. Even even I said that it was a bit much. <laughs> Sean's going to be apologetic in the live chat <laughs> instead of confrontational. Um, nobody's here. Yeah, they're all gone, aren't they? Yeah. Ollie is sourcing a new duck for his pond mm-hmm. um, in Cornwall. You yep. don't know when he's going to be back. Where's Laura? Laura's in Scotland. Laura's in Scotland. Um, Recovering the SMP. Alba, I heard actually. Oh, is it? <laughs> She's pivoted completely. <laughs> got like 11,000 votes. Alba did? Yeah. That's shocking. Really. Isn't it dreadful? Yeah. It's yeah, quite it's embarrassing. Not. It's really bad. And Ava is um, actually reforms, comms, directs. She's taking up the position within Parliament. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah. She will be leaving the podcast. Mm-hmm. It was great to have her here while she was here. But, oh, honestly, yeah. it actually just became too much of a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We made a joke of it for too long, didn't we? We really should have nipped that in the butt early, S- earlier on. Speaking of jokes that went on for too long, the peanut debate has gone on for far too long. Mm-hmm. And I think both Ava and I have been wildly misrepresented yeah. <laughs> in what we were arguing. I won't clarify Ava's because I won't want to speak for her because mm-hmm. she's too busy speaking for Nigel Farage. Yeah, yeah. Um, I... I don't think it's okay. Like, I don't think it's a good thing to be if someone said, uh-huh. I just think in that specific instance, the appropriate punishment is not prison. I That's think what, what people I've... misunderstood was that in her argument that if someone purposely gives someone peanuts, yes, they should go to prison. It's, it's murder. Then, yes. That's covered yeah, by yeah, murder yeah. laws. You should. But you were speaking in the hypothetical that nine and a half times out of ten, that doesn't happen. People do not. I think knowing like four, I think like nine hundred ninety-nine give a <laughs> thousand. Yeah, like people don't know. It. People who work in restaurants don't knowingly give people a anaphylactic shock. As far as we're aware, actually, there might be a cabal mm-hmm. of serial killers that we Shadowy don't. Cabal of <laughs> <waiters>. cabal. <laughs> <laughs> we're going. We're going to have to hang them all. Uh huh. Are you watching House of Dragon? I'm not. I've not watched any Game of Thrones related things that's weird mm-hmm. very popular yeah you i've not watched that i've not watched breaking bad what else have i not watched they're the only two on the top of my head now the wire i've not watched sopranos i'm nearly finished the sopranos okay. now the, uh, the west wing haven't seen the west wing i've seen house of cards i've seen uh what's the other one the one with claire danes homeland homeland yeah yeah, I've seen well, that. Add Game of Thrones and House of Dragon. It's just too much. There's, There's too, too much, much, too in much it. television. Yeah. Like I was already thinking that when I was watching I only started The Sopranos like I think I started it two years ago, but it's just one of those things that you need a lot of time to do. Like I watch it so intermittently that I, n- I need to sometimes watch like the last 20 minutes mm-hmm. of the previous episode and then go back into it. It's also because there's so many episodes. Like they just yeah. used to make TV for fun. Yeah, like yeah If you yeah. want to watch Lost, there's like 24 episodes a season. Mm-hmm. And there's like, what, 15, 20 seasons? Nowhere near as much as that. I'm going to say seven. Is there only seven seasons of Lost? Tw- 15 is a ton. I it's swear not, there's not, more than that. There not, has to be more than 10. It's not like Always Sunny. It's not like... Sure, but I re- do you not remember when you were a kid and you had the appointed viewing on like Sky One and Channel Four of mm-hmm. The Simpsons, mm-hmm. and then Lost would be on after it sometimes. So I only watched. But I remember Lost that as an that adult. Was, I right, okay. I didn't watch it as it was going on, and mm-hmm. I've only seen one and a half seasons. Right, you've got a lot of work to do. There's a whole fifteen <laughs> other seasons you need to watch. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a million hours. Anyway, what was my point? Sorry, about his dragon. Mm-hmm. A rat catcher in the castle does something wrong, and in response. The king hangs all the rat catchers, mm-hmm. which which is what we he should got do. Him. With he certainly got he certainly got the one <laughs> <laughs> that, that, did, that did something wrong, um, and they might, we might have to do that to waiters. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine, really. We should have done that. With... No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say we should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to cut that. Um, we can bleep that. Uh-huh. That'd be funny, right? Yeah, let's bleep it. Let's yeah. Bleep it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of radical solutions, mm-hmm. the popular conservatives are 
clinging on. You know, in your last segue, I thought you were going to go straight onto the popcorn. I can't remember what the segue was, but I, I was like, that. that would have been a good segue. I, I heard it, and that's when I moved the conversation on onto yeah. House of Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm good at this. Um, yeah, the popular conservatives had a conference, mm -hmm. their second conference in six months. And like a moth to a flame, you were there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And do you know what? They let us in. Yeah. <laughs> which. I'm not being funny. I, I wasn't being glib when I was like, I tweeted yesterday, they're so desperate for attendees, they've let me in. We are not allowed into these things, as yeah. a general rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have earned my stripes standing outside these things. Mm -hmm. Even so, mainstream conservative conferences, yep. party things, you were well, like, what, two yeah. and a half years ago? Yeah, like, host, were, like hostings, right wing things don't let us in. Uh -huh. But I texted the guy last, on oh, not last night, the night before, asking if we could come in. And he was like, absolutely, man. <laughs> The more the merrier. Is this the same guy that would have, like, been airing you? I've never texted. I've never texted him before. I think I've emailed someone, and I right. don't know who it was, mm -hmm. or just never heard back from. Mm -hmm. But goodness me, they were. It, it was, it was in this place called the Emmanuel Centre, which is a church in Westminster, mm -hmm. and God is nice on the inside. It's where Nacom was last yes. year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very, very familiar with the exterior. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you notice, Steve Bray was not there. Every conservative event mm -hmm. for the past, what, however long, since Steve Bray found his calling. Do you think he's gone to a farm upstate? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, or, or, or they're just irrelevant. There's nothing to protest. Wait, that's probably the most damning thing that could happen to the Conservative Party is that Steve Bray doesn't pick at their events anymore. Professional conservative opposer, uh -huh. Steve Bray, cannot be arsed coming to your event. Yeah. And also the get the guest list in when I went in when I went stood outside in February, it was jumping. It was really really busy, mm. and there was MPs coming down from um, Parliament to attend in their free time. There was hardly anyone there. Mm -hmm. It was in this. I think there was about two hundred people there. Um, That's nothing really. Isn't only. It? Only two current. No, excuse me. I was about to say, Jacob Rees-Mogg lost his no. seat. One current That's MP well was there. Him. Sheila Braverman giving a pre-recorded speech, yeah. which she'd recorded into her laptop webcam <laughs> in her hotel room, presumably. So that means DC. then there were no, there were no conservative MPs present. None that I recognised. Yeah, I'm not saying that there were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, yeah. but there was no like obvious big dogs mm -hmm. there. Was there? A ton of young young guys in suits. They were having a whale of a time. That's that noise we were talking about. <laughs> oh right? yeah, oh, that's it. Someone's jumping up and down upstairs. Uh huh. Um, and just people were seething, mm -hmm. absolutely seething about the loss. And what was interesting was what they think went wrong is that the Conservatives haven't been conservative enough. That's a take really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can point to the Conservative administration of the United Kingdom and suggest it was a socialist utopia. Well, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's disingenuous. But I mean, that's been their line the whole time, really, hasn't it? Uh, Popcon and Nacon is mm. that the mainstream representatives of conservatism need to go a lot further than what they have done, despite being as far right as you could possibly be in government. Um, it seems quite a strange take to have that the reason why we didn't win or the reason why we didn't do better is that we didn't go further on things. Like the, there are so few right-wing policies that they could have enacted. They, like there was nothing left for them no. to propose, no. you know, apart from anything that reform might have been doing. Or like, like capital, fracking or capital something. Capital punishment. Like they, didn't get, they didn't break that. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't break that class. Did reform go on capital punishment in the end? I don't think so. I don't think they did. Yeah. So like it, it, there's even things that are too fringe for popcorn. Mm -hmm. That's there. You asked about that. Do you, would you bring back capital punishment? Yeah. <laughs> um, what, was, what was interesting is they were largely all conservative members. A few reform people, like or reform members. Are you a member of the party? Is that a party? Like supporters, registered yeah. supporters, maybe floating about to keep an eye on the right, and they were all absolutely fucking furious at the party mm -hmm. like you're at you ask them how do you win the next election and they were like we need to empower the local members mm -hmm. as if that's the solution accidentally left because they were furious about they've, they've got so many objections to how 
Conservative Central Office runs itself, like parachuting in MPs to other constituencies. Um, what they really object to is the membership shows Liz Truss and then people toppled her. Mm -hmm. And then the MPs chose Rishi Sunak. The Westminster party got so rid of her and put in him. Yeah. The, the parliamentary party is at odds with the membership in that decision. Mm -hmm. And they don't recognize that that... And then I said to one of them, I was like, maybe the membership was wrong. As in the, the Conservatives never made their comeback from that polling drop off after the Truss's disaster yeah. in government. It just did not, even, did not begin to recover. Maybe the membership was wrong, but for God's sake, there's more noise. <laughs> it's good stuff. And I'm not even on the audio today. <laughs> um, maybe the membership was wrong about mm. choosing this trust. Well, Call whether they're wrong or not, I, I do subscribe to their idea that you, you can be wrong as a party, you can lose as a party, but if you lose as a tiny, tiny block that represents a fraction of the percentage of the membership of the party, acting on behalf of the entire membership, I can understand why you would want greater autonomy for the local constituency parties. Um, even if you are wrong, even if you do vote for someone like Liz Truss, um, I don't think where, where I would stop is saying that the local party and the membership at large should be able to veto the parliamentary party's decision to get rid of her. Um, but it does make sense for a political party to represent the interests of one, the people of the country, but also the members of the party. Mm -hmm. And it is quite foreign that the Conservative Party for not not just in the election campaign for a very, very long time have acted straight out of CCHQ rather than having autonomy within the local constituencies. That's what one guy I asked why the Conservatives lost the election and he said it was David Cameron's centralisation of the party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they also were quite keen to claim reforms victory as like a victory for conservatism, mm. which I'm not necessarily sure they can claim that as a victory. Yeah. I I'm, I'm don't really buy that if reform didn't exist, those votes would have gone straight to the Conservatives. I think it's an interesting thought experiment to take how reform performed in the in the red wall seats in the seats that Labour won back from the Conservatives to think what would have happened in 2019 had ref had the uh, the Brexit Party stood yes. in those constituencies. So I guess I, I do get where they're coming from there, right? Yeah. That like yeah, okay, they they didn't. They got four MPs. Mm -hmm. They didn't, it's not like a stonking victory, like the exit poll had them on 14. Um, I think when you look at the breakdowns in those constituencies, like I think, I think the first like 10 or 15 seats that we were looking at on election night, second place was reformed by mm -hmm. considerable margin. Mm -hmm. um, and the swing was nearly one for one with the Conservative Party. Um, so, it's it's not necessarily a victory for conservatism because they didn't win in the end, mm -hmm. but it, it is telling to see where conservative thought is going in the future. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you're considering what these what these people are saying and they're how um, unrepresented they feel by the conservative party. That the one positive that they can take out of it is the performance of reform. I think it's interesting to to think about where conservative thought is going to be in five years time who it's going to be behind right mm -hmm. is it i don't know if you can I, I don't know if you can put the reform vote as like part of the movement of conservatism or I, i'm not sure if it's just reactionary anger protest necessarily mm -hmm. i'm not sure the people who voted for reform would describe themselves as small c conservatives mm -hmm. interested in like well do you think that, ideas yeah do you think that the votes for Labour were protest votes against the Conservatives or a positive swing towards the policies of Keir Starmer? More, more protest, I would probably say, but mm -hmm. I think there has to be some positive element. That no, but so like what I'm getting at there is that like if if Labour is a protest vote, why are the reform voters not voting for Labour rather than? Oh, because they like because they like because they're more right wing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is cause, like because they, they feel they feel more strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, th I think there's I think there is a. I don't think that I don't think it goes, Labour to Conservative to, to Reform. I think 
Oh yeah, it, yeah, it could absolutely. have been swinging between Reform and Labour. Mm -hmm. um, the Conservatives are, are fighting. They're in the they're, chaos so here, aren't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're absolutely at each other's throats. Um, Kemi Badnock had a go at Rishi during the <laughs> during the shadow cabinet meeting. Uh huh. Um, just, just absolutely uh, open season on the on the leader of the opposition. Um, well, it was funny what she said about uh, Suella Braverman as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suella, like, it was this before or after the... The progress flag the, thing. No, the, the pre-rec uh, popcorn that she said this. I think it was before, wasn't it? I don't know when Shadow Cabinet was, but maybe happening concurrently, mm. potentially. But like seeing that Suella Braverman is having a very public nervous breakdown. <laughs> it's actually savage. And then let's say a couple of hours later, she then speaks on a pre-recorded thing to the popular conservative conference. Mm. It, they're just eating themselves. It's, um, I don't know how I feel about it. Do I feel, I, I think there's only so much laughing at the fall of the conservative party that you can do. It's it's very funny. I don't it's, think that's true. I think there's an infinite amount. I well, there there comes a point that you then need to go. Oh, this is really bad. Yeah, but that only been, the opposition is so. Oh, it's only been six days. Sure, sure. <laughs> we can have a well, laugh. I'm, I'm just thinking big picture, man. You know, <laughs> um, it's like everything that we're going to be talking about today is that they're just in their banter era. Everything that's happening currently is them sniping at each other rather than looking outwards or looking, looking inwards at how we lost the vote by, by uh, sorry, how they lost the election. Kemi Badnock touches on it a little bit on Rishi Sunak saying that he sh shouldn't call the election so early. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to me to be the only reflective piece of news that has come out of the Conservative Party as of yet. It's just been sniping at each other. Um, I mean, long may it continue, but I think it, there does come a point where you need to start thinking, where are they going to be in six months mm -hmm. if they're just going to continue fighting against one another? Like Rishi Sunak's checked out. He doesn't care <laughs> at this point. You know, it's they so, can continue to so criticize what he did in the general election or however he managed it. But I don't think he really cares anymore. Like anybody like whether it's Kemi Badenoch, whether it's somebody else that's going to take over the party is going to have to deal with the result that they had. And I think it's just kind of a bad look that they're continuing to to win, po to get points up on each other, you know? Yeah, but I suppose it is the beginning of the machinations of a leadership campaign. I think Kemi, Badnock and Suella mm -hmm. or kind of the ones people talk about. Yeah. I actually think Suella's too toxic a yeah. candidate. I think the leadership will recognise, excuse me, the membership might recognise that you can't really have the leader of a modern party saying that the pride, pride flag shouldn't be flown over. <laughs> it, Government, it would have been invaded yeah. by the pride flag. Yeah. Um, but it's also too close to reform as well, you know. If if someone like that becomes the leader of the Conservative mm -hmm. Party, it becomes far more likely, in my eyes anyway, that you would have some sort of coalition between reform and the Conservatives, or certainly like they would represent the right wing opposition. Um, in uh, at which time it starts to feel like they would blend into one another. Mm -hmm. um, I think you do need to, within political parties, have some, especially when the parties are such broad churches as well, you need to have some sort of like, you need to have a line where you say, I actually think the pride flag is a good thing. It's a nice symbol. It's something that represents mm -hmm. um, a community that needs to be represented. If you're just parroting what reform are saying, you can, especially when there's such a force eating into your your um, uh, your voter base. I don't think it's a very um, beneficial thing to do, unless you want to try and claw back that voter base from reform. But the fact that Nigel Farage is in the House of Commons, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. No, and also you might, you just lend legitimacy to reform if you don't yeah. ape them. You just give them. They're like, oh well, they're saying that. They said that first. Yeah, that must be a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Oh, woke's gone mad. Again, <laughs> dreadful news. <laughs> Civil servants are, are going to be allowed to wear rainbow lanyards. Oh, I don't know. But I think I might just move back to Ireland now. <laughs> We're what, the, the haven of LGBT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Socially liberal. <laughs> Join the National Party or something. Is there anything else you guys need to have a referendum on? 
Uh, currently, I think I think the next thing we're gonna have a referendum on is uh, cannabis. Really? Yeah. Ooh. There was a cit citizens' assembly last year on it. Now there are a lot of sim citizens' assemblies at all times. For those unfamiliar with Irish politics, yes. Um, so the way we operate, so we have a written constitution. It'd be nice if you had Boo. one as well. <laughs> um, and because we have a written constitution, any time an article of the constitution gets changed, there needs to be a referendum on it. Um, so that's what happened when in 2015 we voted to uh, legalize same-sex marriage um, because I think the article in the constitution said that um, marriage was between a man and a woman. Is that not weird to have in your constitution? From the I off? mean, it was written a long time ago. Like in the 19th century or 20th century yeah it would have been like 1920 oh, maybe 1919 i think it's weird just in your constitution but because there wasn't like it wasn't like there was a large lgbt population sure, clamoring, sure, sure, sure. But, but, and yeah. another thing yeah. <laughs> but like the, the people who took over the country post-independence yeah. were like i think it, it's bandied about historians and stuff that they say it was the most conservative revolution mm. in history yeah so like and I mean, the radicals of that re revolution were killed by the Brits. Um, so the people who remained were these, the, it, it essentially was a theocracy up until like the 1970s, 1980s. Um, like we had things, I'm not, I'm not gonna go too far into it. The, um, the referendum stuff. So like, yeah, constitution said marriage is between the man and the woman. Uh, we repealed that to have marriage between anybody of any sex. Ergo, same-sex marriage is mm. legalized. Um, there was then the abortion referendum, which um, I think it would have been in the 1980s. They had a referendum to actually, to make, to, to have stricter rules on abortion that passed. Um, and Jeez. so the repealing the eighth, i.e. Um, legalizing abortion was to get rid of that amendment of the constitution. We had one recently uh, last year to change um, the role of the mother in the house and the duty of the state to the family, um, which both were voted no on. Um, won't, won't bore you or listeners on the ins and outs of it, but the right, the Irish far right tried to co-opt those referendums and uh, to get people to vote no on them because of like trans and woke and this kind of thing. Um, but it ended up that it was just, it was, it was just such a, strangely worded amendment to the constitution that people's senses came to be that if we if we pass these two referendums it would have led to the state having the ability to abolish benefits in future mm. because it was it was essentially removing the state's responsibility to a family or to a person um that's one of the referendums. There was another one as well. But all of the main parties campaigned for yes. The Irish people voted no. I think it was the largest no vote in the history of the state or something like that. Um, but and yeah. And so, had, they had systems assemblies for all of these. Yeah. So all of these um, all of these referendums basically go through a, a couple of months of um, uh, people from all over the country, from all different age groups, uh, uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, etc sat down in a room in Leinster House or somewhere near Leinster House. Um, they have experts come in, talk them through the hypotheticals of what would happen if this article or that article was removed from the constitution. They have experts in, so with the, with the cannabis one, for example, they would have had um, people from countries like say the Netherlands or Portugal, where Portugal where decriminalization for most drugs has happened. All drugs. I think all drugs. Yeah. Um, so you'd have people like that coming in, speaking to the citizens' assembly, and then <clears> basically <throat> the citizens' assembly would write a report, then goes to the uh, parliament and the president, and then they decide whether there's going to be a referendum on it or not. But to my knowledge, that's the only citizens' assembly that there's been recently. I don't think the final report from it has come out because I think it was just finished near the end of the year. Um, and I think there's also a citizens assembly on at the moment. No, there, there are campaigns going on to have a citizens assembly on Irish unity. 
um, oh, happening at the moment. But I don't think that's going to happen for a while. If it, if it has already happened, I'll stand corrected. But I refuse. I don't think it has. I think we're <laughs> yeah. not, I think we've still got part of it. Yeah. No. The, the, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Is that like it would be a citizens' assembly of people? Um, so I think they do um, invite people <clears throat> from Northern Ireland to take part in the citizens' assemblies. So whether there'd be a larger proportion of people from Northern Ireland involved in a citizens' assembly like that. Um, what brought us on to citizens' assemblies? I asked if you guys had anything legal, to, anything else to have a referendum on. Yeah, so it was probably going to be cannabis. Yeah, it was, it was more just a bar, but your Swiss, Swiss tendencies <laughs> <laughs> across the Irish Sea. You can't have, I think we've had too many referendums. There's also a take on it um, with the cannabis one, is mm -hmm. that um, because you've got, obviously, um, Silicon Dock, a lot of the big tech companies have their tax havens in Ireland. I'm going to hedge a bit. Ah. The audience do not know what Silicon Dock is. Silicon Dock is um, the name that we give to a part of Dublin in the Docklands of Dublin, where the headquarters of the likes of Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon. Happily pay there. zero taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the fucking Irish government brought the European, um, the European Parliament to court a couple of years ago because the European Parliament ruled that those companies had to pay their tax to the <laughs> Irish government. And the Irish no government, way. on behalf of those companies, brought it to the European that's court. That's the most cuck thing. Exactly. Bit, but, so that's that's the thing with the cannabis thing, because it's such a massive industry in America at the moment. Um, the thought is, because Americans are making so much money off it, and they're going to need somewhere to wash their money, you can't do it off the proceeds of a, an illegal substance in a country. So... The idea is they will legalize cannabis, so it makes it easier for American um, supermassive cannabis farms to be able to get away with paying zero tax on their proceeds. Is there a tension? Because I think people like to think about Irish republicanism and unity as quite like a left wing endeavor. Mm. And you pointed out there that the people who founded the state of Ireland were very conservative. Mm -hmm. Ireland's quite a conservative country, like up until recently wasn't very socially liberal. Yeah. Um, is there a tension between like the call for Irish unity and like the actual existence of Ireland, like the, in its current form? How do, do you mean? In terms of like Sinn Féin is quite like a left-wing party. Yeah. And yeah. probably is the biggest proponents of republicanism in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that people miss about the politics of the Republic is that de facto, all of the political parties in the Republic of Ireland are pro-unity. Mm -hmm. um, even the like, like the Green Party and stuff, like it, it, they're not obviously as vocal on the issue as someone like Sinn Féin. Um, but it's, I think it's just the history of all the political party. Like, I mean, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael separated on the topic of partition. Yeah. You know, they were once called Sinn Féin. Mm -hmm. They separated into Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. Um, they are both unity parties now. Um, Fine Gael, a little bit more weird about their unity politics. Really? You know, I was at a thing uh, last year where, uh, I don't know if he still is, but he was Fine Gael's, um, he was Fine Gael's European Affairs spokesperson at the time, Neil Richmond. Um, and he was talking about Irish unity and bandying out the idea that um, in a united Ireland, they would consider rejoining the Commonwealth. Holy and, shit. Yeah. Oh my now, God. Yeah. <laughs> now, f historically, <laughs> yeah. So historically for people who don't know, Fine Gael were the, the side of the party that essentially approved partition. Mm. Um, that's a TLDR. There are far more, mo far more ma moving parts to it. Michael Collins was part of Fine Gael, not necessarily part of Fine Gael, it was part of Sinn Féin mm -hmm. that became Fine Gael. Yep. Um, Friend of the family? Yes. Yes, so I believe. I believe as Owen well. Owen McNeil? No, it's Owen not Owen McNeil. Owen McEwan. McEwan. Um, Sean McEwan. Sean McEwan. Sean McEwan. Mm. Yes. Um, and so historically Fine Gael have always been the softer on unity, the, the more quiet. Like they're essentially the Conservative Party of Ireland. Um, and so whenever they pipe up about Irish unity, it is the weirdest shit that they come up with. Like things like the Commonwealth, things like they said something about, uh, I think Leo Varadkar a couple of years ago said that 
if a united Ireland happened, there is a world in which Stormont is still an entity within a united Ireland. So effectively, the, the system of Northern Ireland still exists, but just with the tricolour above Stormont. Would that, would that not just be devolution? Like yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. there might there might I, be the same thing monster. Yeah, me personally, I'm I'm a subscriber to the idea of like a um a federal republic system where there's four mm -hmm. provinces that have four devolved governments. Um whether the population is big enough in the other provinces is, an, is another thing. But then also like things like would it be a good idea to have like an electoral college for the upper house and this kind of thing to have equal representation across provinces and that but like that's the thing is that because unity has not been talked about um by anybody in depth apart from Sinn Féin there is just a very there is a very it's not loose it's just it's a subsuming of Northern Ireland is what people understand Irish unity to be um, whereas there's so many different possibilities mm -hmm. and so many different ways that you could go about Irish unity that just aren't discussed because none of the other main parties talk about it enough, um, which is why you need something like a citizens assembly for it to talk about all the possibilities of what it could be. It could be like a Switzerland, you know, I like suppose, a cantonal I, system. I suppose as well, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have been in government, so it probably isn't a priority for the government of the day mm -hmm. to lead the news agenda with, by the way, here's a white paper on yeah, sure, sure. I mean, you could have that, but I mean, they've been in government since the foundation of the state. You True, know? yeah. Uh, they're they're going to get around to it at one point. Maybe once they've <laughs> finished unpicking their fucking <laughs> insane constitution. <laughs> no one should have any DMT <laughs> in this country. I think there was another one. I don't know if we, if we probably didn't have a referendum on it, but there was one that was like, you couldn't hang out your washing on a Sunday. Oh, for God's what? Yeah. That just got rid of. I think substantial things we have referendums. Do you think, on, like for things France, like that. they were looking at that, being like, "What the fuck are you guys?" Yeah. <laughs> like, when, like, when we're putting in our application to join the European <laughs> Union, and they're like, "You can't do what on a Sunday." <laughs> Any countries like America, like, like the revolutionary founding state, like the, like uh -huh. the found, foundational principles of liberalism, uh -huh. and then be like. What is this a theocratic like Iran taking notes? <laughs> 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 what to do? Um, there was. They've been, they were swearing. They're swearing in the MPs. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Corbyn's off Back the leash. To Britain. Thank that was, God. That was so funny. Jeremy Corbyn in the queue, mm -hmm. saying, "What a waste of time." Apparently, he says that every time. I oh, read really? someone say that he says something along those lines every time he's in the in the queue to be sworn in. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've not heard him say it before. Maybe, they, maybe, maybe you haven't been watching. Did you watch the last time? Uh, I think so. I mean, he would have been the leader of the opposition the last time, wouldn't he? <laughs> yes, I don't think I did, though. I don't think I did uh -huh. watch it. Um, yeah, there was... It's, you know what's actually quite difficult, mm. from her perspective, is looking at the Westminster Chamber and having no fucking clue who anyone is. Uh-huh. Just, just anybody, all the MPs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, wasn't that the issue with um, the 1922 committee meeting yesterday? <laughs> was that, like, the, um, the, new, the, like, the new Conservative members were kind of disgruntled at the options that were given to them for the new chair of the 1922 committee because they kind of just had the same pitch and obviously because these people are brand new into Westminster they've got no idea who either of them are <laughs> so they're just kind of like do I vote yeah. A or do I vote B yeah. I, I've no context for how nice either of those people are it must be interesting being like you're so excited to finally be an MP mm -hmm. and everyone around you is fucking miserable yeah it's just absolutely like Heads gone, completely uh -huh. lost, lost their heads. Yeah, and you're like, oh, first day. Like, well, that's the that's probably the big contrast between Labour and Conservative now, isn't it? That like, you've got this. How many new MPs? Like a uh, uh, hundred and something. Seven million. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Six hundred and fifty new MPs. Yeah, um, they've got all these new MPs in Labour, and they're obviously having the time of their lives right their their first job in parliament and they're in government and they're, they're getting, and they've got they're a super getting majority. drunk in the bar yeah probably and they can skip the queue they can, that's a new thing what the fuck is that about yeah, that's not it's fair i think sick. the irish state should have a referendum on that. <laughs> <laughs> the ira should stage a referendum on it <laughs> irish state all oh, right <laughs> <laughs> i think the ira really needs to intervene <laughs> <laughs> well i have something to say about this uh the real ira comes out for 
Imagine just a guy in fatigues and a balaclava walking into West Holy East shit. being I'm like, why, how come he gets the sketch? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a Sinn Féin. <laughs> 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 in fairness that's probably exactly who they're looking out for yeah the policeman with guns I don't, uh -huh. I don't think that person would get very far no they, they absolutely wouldn't it's a shame really isn't it maybe they, maybe they should do that as a prank like a Sinn Féin guy goes into they do go into Westminster sometimes but they just go and don't go into the chamber that's so interesting yeah they they are here in London not canvassing in a <laughs> in canvassing to north. finally win <laughs> to finally win our they're seat. up in Cricklewood they're um, in, Ken in Kilburn. Kilburn yeah um, no they they do come over to like events and stuff um, there was one thing that they had I think in October November last year in the Camden Irish Centre um, where all of the Sinn Féin MPs were uh, just doing a talk on what they've been up to as Westminster MPs mm -hmm. Um and obviously they were there for a couple of days um, in Westminster talking to, I think they said that they had meetings with Chris Eaton Harris at one point, Steve Baker and all these people. So like, but they would be out on the balcony and in the bar, but they wouldn't, I'd, I'd like to be a fly on the wall for like, as they leave the bar with a Steve Baker or Chris Eaton Harris and they're walking towards the chamber and the two boys are like, Maybe, maybe now. <laughs> like, pushing them in. Come on. <laughs> they mistake, you know, you know the thing of like dragging Lindsay Hoyle to the speaker chair? Uh -huh. They mistake that for like some kind of coy tradition. <laughs> dragging, <laughs> making, forcing them to swear allegiance to the and king. Everyone's there like, who are these people? Oh, I've been an MP for 20 years. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Jerry Adams. Yeah. Um, should we leave it there? Okay. Uh, how long has that been? 39. 39? Yeah. Whoa. That's cool. Great. Um, excellent. You're going to Northern Ireland tomorrow to make I a report indeed. about the State of Union. If you if you can't get enough, I'll tell you what. If you, <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed yeah, we that on a wild pivot there. Yeah, if you we? enjoyed that conversation about Irish politics, also genuinely let us know. Maybe don't be mean if you don't if you didn't enjoy it. Uh -huh. But it's good to gauge what they're interested in. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they like that. Because I think as a blanket rule, I just think they're not interested in Scottish politics because of the performance of the videos we've made about Scottish politics, but yeah. is that we haven't made interesting enough videos. Mm. So I'm curious to see, I think they're more interested in the politics of Northern Ireland than perhaps Scotland. Um, yeah, sometimes also your ideas are very, sometimes very helpful. Mm. Sometimes they're total dog shit. I'm not afraid <laughs> to say it. <laughs> I'd, I'll second that. Sometimes, sometimes you're just better off not. <laughs> <laughs> just don't post very... if you've got a stupid <laughs> idea. <laughs> Think twice before you post. Put it in drafts. There's a reason you're there. And there's a reason <laughs> <laughs> we're here. Uh, let us know how you like this confrontational relationship we've developed with you. Does it, it's, does it feel mean? I don't oh, think it does. I don't know. They'll get it. They'll, They'll get, get it. it. We're joking. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for watching and listening. Leave us a review. Like mm -hmm. us. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Check out and our other wait excellent content. half hour before posting on the Reddit as well. Wait half an hour? Yeah. Why? So write your draft. <laughs> Just, <laughs> sit, I, mean, I, I cannot it overstate that enough. You write it, half an hour, and then read it, yep. and then post it. Someone had a list of ideas for like spin-off shows, and one of them was called um, Pokemon Joe, where we, just, where we just play Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that. I didn't get enough traction on the subreddit, actually. Mm. That was a that was a favourite. Um, do a drawing of Sean. Well, let's see them. A what, drawing of me? Are there drawings of me? No, do one. Oh, okay. I don't think yeah, there are any. Do a drawing of me. Yeah. yeah. Um, draw what you think Sam looks like. That'd be good as well. That would be very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye.